All right, so here we are. Let's talk about it. Um, I'll try to talk fast. I did this earlier today. It, it created a 30 minute video and I couldn't upload it. So um, maybe less talking this time. So what we're gonna talk about is 100 things you should know for your 100 question test. So I have 63 bullets here, but understand that in each bullet, sometimes there's up to four different things that you should study. Um, not only that, but there could be one thing and that thing is mentioned one, two, three plus times during the course. So there's a hundred plus things here that you may see, right? So let's go ahead. All right, so first thing you should know is you cannot work under another person's certification, meaning the EPA certification. That's a question. ODP, you need to know the difference between ODP and GDP. This is ozone depletion potential. This is global warming potential. When it comes to ODP, think chlorine. Chlorine is one of the most harmful uh, elements for the ozone layer. When you think GDP, think carbon dioxide. When it comes to carbon dioxide, CO2, it has a base of one, which means anything higher than one is higher than the baseline, two, three, four, et cetera, right? So ODP and GDP, those are GW, these are, these are gonna repeatedly be talked about over the course of your 100 questions. This whole section right here, um, CFCs, HFCs, HFC, HFOs, HCs, this right here, I'm gonna create a chart in the next videos that is screenshotable, so I stripped it off for the information and it's gonna be easier for you to study. So there's gonna be significantly less words, there'll probably be a sentence and then a breakdown of what it's composed of. Cause there may be a question that's like, which one of these has chlorine, right? <clears throat> Um, and you see a lot of C's, you know, you got, I think this is chlorofluorocarbon, so you know that this one does. And fun fact, here's another thing, CFC is the most harmful. This is the most harmful one out of all of these. All right, going up, safety group. Uh, yep, so on page seven, there's a, a safety group chart where they talk about um, high form of middle, and this is off the manual, EPA section 608 manual that you have to study to pass your test. Um, so they give it to you. Um, so anyway, safety group, I can't show it because of certain reasons. Um, so safety group, and it's gonna be A1 through A3, and then B1 through B3. Um, and I'll do a chart, I'll do my separate chart um, by my own words that translates directly over. But for now, study that safety chart, A1 through A3, and B1 through B3 on uh, page seven. All right, so moving on, um, and once again, that'll be broken down into a screenshot chart for you in the next videos. Uh, propane, what to know about propane? The only thing you need to know is why don't, propane is technically a refrigerant, why don't we use propane? It's because it is, it has impurities. That's why we don't use it as a refrigerant. Um, then know the difference between azeotropic and non-azeotropic, um, and know that the opposite of azeotropic is also zeotropic. So zeotropic and non-azeotropic are the same thing. I'll create a chart. Azeotropic basically, I believe is two compounds, yep. But when they combine, it makes one solid compound. Non-azeotropic is basically there's two compounds and they're together inside the cylinder, but they have they don't mix well. So one will have a different boiling point than the other, and that will affect bubble and dew and things like that as a whole. So in which the next subject is studying bubble. You don't have to study bubble and dew points, you just have to know what they mean. All right, moving up over here. Um fractionalization, which I just described, where you have two separate um where it, when it comes to the non-azeotropic, those two separate boiling points. That's what fractionalization is. EPA does not approve of drop-ins. So you're gonna see this, I saw this like a couple times. EPA does not approve of a drop-in. It's basically when you're working with different refrigerants, you're like, well, instead of this R, I'm gonna use this R. You can't, if EPA isn't approved of it, you can't do it. You can't just do your own science experiment. So when you see drop-in, know that it usually means no. This is three separate sections, low, medium, high, and very high pressured. You have to know there's a chart, page eight, where there, and there's two, there's two charts. There's one where the chart is written out and then there's one where they broke it down. I'm gonna combine one and make a chart, but know the low, medium, high, this was like four to six plus questions, knowing the low, the medium, the high, and very high. So like low will be 30 PSI or lower, medium will be 30 to 155. So that's what you mean. Not only do you not know, you need to know the pressures, you also need to know the poundage and things like that which once again, I'm gonna break that into chart. There'll be you know three columns, bang, bang, bang. Uh, Montreal Act Protocol and the Clean Air Act. These are basically the same thing. The Montreal Air Protocol basically came first, so in Canada, and then America made the Clean Air Act afterward, which has similar. Know this number right here, $44,539. That is the fine for breaking the rules of the Clean Air Act. That is a number, 44539. You'll only ever see 
I only saw one monetary number. So this is the only dollar sign thing that I would have to memorize, 44539. And now when you see it, they're not gonna give you like 44531, 53, it's gonna be different. Like one will be a thousand, one will be 20,000, one will be 30,000, one will be 40. So they'll be different. So 44539, that's the fine. All right, um, external, electro, okay. Uh, page nine, circuits. Exter okay, um, so when it comes to external electrical circuits, you can work on them without an EPA. That's gonna be the question is what, <clears throat> what do you not need to work on? You don't need an EPA to work on the external electrical circuits of things like refrigerators, because it's external. You don't need the EPA search for that. Um, allowable releases, so when you see nitrogen leak tests and trace gases, those are acceptable to be released. Nitrogen, when it comes to nitrogen leak tests, you're allowed to, you know, let out a marginal amount and anything with the word trace gases, that is allowed. All right, um, and you're, whenever you see nitrogen, you're also gonna see leak tests, usually, usually. All right, so, <clears throat> it is the responsibility of, your, of the technician to know if the EPA changes rules. It is the responsibility of the technician if the EPA changes rules. SNAP is an alternatives program. That is a program, um, the significant new alternatives policy is basically these. It, they determine which refrigerants are the least harmful, and those are the ones that are then put into circulation. Um, SNAP, so it kind of falls into the Montreal Clean Air. SNAP is just, you know, synergistic to Clean Air. It, they're determining what are the best refrigerants to use. All right, desiccant humidifiers. This one right here is another one of those that, um, are not covered by EPA section. So because they don't contain refrigerants, desiccant humidifiers, you don't need an EPA. So you don't need an EPA to work on external electrical circuits of like refrigerators, and you don't need one for desiccant humidifiers. All right, and then study what self-contained versus system dependent is um, <clears throat> when it comes to um, recovery devices. So for the self-contained, it doesn't require assistance. And then for the system dependent, it does require assistance. I'll do a separate chart as well for that's gonna be screenshotable, but understanding these two, that is several questions. And they word them different ways. So if you answer it right the first time, then you should be answering it right the second time if you understand that they're just rewording it. <clears throat> if you see the word aperture process stub, understand that that is what's used to make it easier to recover refrigerant. Aperture or process stub. That's what makes it um, easier to help recover refrigerants that do not have service valves. I uh, venting prohibition, you'll see a couple of questions on that. Um, uh, this is big, recover, recycle, and reclaim. Um, so when it comes to those, recycle, basically you're cleaning it up a little and reusing it. Um, recovery is you're basically taking it completely out to put back into a bottle back yeah so you're just recovering it so you can work on the machine to put it back reclaim is you're bringing it back to virgin standards and you're bringing that back to the manufacturer so it's going so recycle you can do on your own you're cleaning up a little recovery you're taking it out just so you can work on it but you're not necessarily cleaning it you're just removing it so you can work on the, the device the system and then you're just putting it back and then reclaiming is that you're taking it back so that the manufacturer they're you're gonna drop it off there and they're gonna bring it back to virgin standards I, uh, when you see lab tested equipment, they'll say what is approved. It has to be EPA, lab, EPA approved lab tested equipment. EPA approved lab. So all lab, all equipment needs to be lab EPA approved lab tested. All right. What will increase recovery time? There's a few things, but um, especially on page 11 and, and throughout the manual, what will increase recovery time? So at page 11 and page 22, they talk about that. Leak detection. Uh, page 12, um, so the different ways, uh, page 12 and also page 18, leak detection. System evacuation, so when you see 500 microns, you're, you're, this is the answer for, if you see microns, 2,000, 100, a lot of times the answer is gonna be 500. So that's what system evacuation of 500 microns or less, you're gonna see that a lot, 500 microns. So when it comes to safety equipment, they're gonna say safety glasses and protective gloves when it comes to recovery, when it comes to reclaim, but they may also may add in butyl lines, B-U-T-Y-L, butyl lined. If that's not there, then the answer is probably just protective gloves. Um, Pressure uh, relief valve is never in series, it's always in parallel, only parallel. Never in series, only in parallel.